In this lesson, you will learn how to evaluate expressions that involve multiplication and division of rational numbers, and this will include both positive and negative integers, as well as fractions. So anytime that you have multi-operation expressions, you need to remember the proper order of operations. And to remember the order of operations, you can use the acronym PEMDAS. And this represents the order in which you need to solve. So the first priority is to solve anything in parentheses first. That's the P. The E stands for exponents, so evaluating all exponents is your next step. Then you have multiplication and division, and I'm going to explain why I've grouped those together. And lastly, you have addition and subtraction. So if you just are dealing with multiplication and division, the order doesn't matter. There's no priority between divide or multiply. You solve from left to right as the operations appear. So if division is the first thing on the left, you would divide first. And vice versa is true if multiplication appeared first on the left. The same thing goes for addition and subtraction. There's no order with respect to these two operations. You just solve from left to right as they appear. Let's look at the expression over here on the left. And this is the first problem. I see multiplication, division, and fractions. And fractions are the same thing as division. So we're only looking at multiplication and division. And you know that there's no priority between those two. So solve from left to right. Looking at the left, I see that there is a multiplication expression in the numerator of this fraction. So I'm going to multiply. 4 times 12 is 48. And that's the new numerator there. And you keep it over 5 because nothing's happening to the denominator. And now you have divided by negative 24 over 2. Now see if you can simplify both or one of these fractions. Take a look at 48 over 5. There is no common factor besides 1 between the numbers 48 and 5. So this can't be simplified any further. So you're going to be working with this fraction, which is a little ugly, but hopefully it clears up for us as we continue to solve. So that's going to be divided by. Now here you've got negative 24 and 2. And this is where I want to talk a little bit about sine. So pause on the problem. Let's just talk about sine. If you have two positive numbers, and this applies for multiplication and division, two positive numbers, the answer is always positive. So if you take a positive number, divide it by a positive number, your quotient is positive. Or if you multiply two positive numbers, your product is also positive. If you have two negative numbers, the answer will be, ne um, sorry, will be positive. And lastly, if you have a mix of positive negative, a positive number divided by negative, or positive times negative, the outcome is always negative. So keep that in mind. Now let's look back where we were in the problem. We have negative 24 over 2. And this is the same thing as negative 24 divided by 2. First, just think about the numbers, then think about the sign. If you divide 24 by 2, the answer is 12. Now think about the sign. You have negative 24 divided by positive 2. So this is positive divided by negative. The outcome is negative. So your answer here is negative 12. So what you're going to have is 48 over 5 divided by negative 12. Now to divide this fraction by this whole number is a little tricky. And let me just pull down some, some paper here and make some space. So what we're going to do instead is mul multiply by the reciprocal. And the reason that we're going to do that is dividing by a number is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So to do that, recognize that negative 12 can be written as a fraction as negative 12 over 1. The reciprocal of that is you flip around the numerator and the denominator, so you get 1 over negative 12. This is the reciprocal of negative 12, 1 over negative 12. So let's replace that in. You have 48 divided by 5 times the reciprocal of negative 12, which is negative 1 12. Now, I put the negative sign up here, but it's, it's the same thing. Negative 1 over 12 is the same thing as 1 over negative 12, so you don't have to worry about that. Now let's continue solving. Multiply the fractions by finding the product of the numerators. So you have 48 times negative 1. So that's also, again, you have positive times negative. The answer is going to be negative. So you get negative 48 on top. And on the bottom, you have 5 times 12, which is a product of 60. So you get 60 on the bottom. Both of these numbers are divisible by 12. So if we divide negative 48 by 12, you get negative 4. 
and positive 60 divided by 12 is 5. So this simplifies down to negative 4 fifths. And you could write this as negative 4 over 5 or 4 over negative 5. These answers are the same. Now there's another way that you could have solved this problem, and it actually helps simplify things a little bit. And let me show you that one. So to make a little bit more space, I want to go back to this step right here. Here you have 48 over 5 times negative 1 over 12. If I notice here that the numerator and the denominator share a common factor from the beginning, I don't have to go through and multiply the two denominators and multiply the two numerators. I can start simplifying right here because I know that this is going to end up in the numerator and this factor is going to end up in the denominator and I can simplify those ahead of time. So what happens if I divide both these numbers at this point by 12? So 48 divided by 12 is 4, and I'm going to cross that out and put a 4 there, and 12 divided by 12 is 1, so that leaves 1 in the numerator here. So now I have 4 over 5 times negative 1 over 1. Now multiply the two numerators, and you get 4 times negative 1, which equals negative 4, and multiply the two denominators, you have 5 times 1, which is 5, and look there, we got the same answer that we got when we multiplied through, then simplified, and this is something you can do when you notice that the numerator of one fraction shares a common factor with the denominator of another fraction. They have to be on opposite sides of the fraction to be able to simplify this way. Thanks for watching.